This is my card. I'm Dr. Burkos. Kevin, please. Uh, I prefer Kevin much more than doctor. Never got used to the doctor thing. So, uh, what you're here for and what we're going to talk about is uh, mathematics specific mentoring. So, there's a difference, right? When you talk about content and you talk about what it means to be a mentor, we, we believe in holistic uh, approaches to, to uh, tutoring and mentoring, especially those of us that work at the Math Assistance Center, <coughs> which is where I'm the director. Um, we believe in, in those sorts of things, but this is a more nuanced way of thinking about what mentoring and tutoring looks like in the content of mathematics, okay? Make sense? Are you excited? Hmm? Are you excited? Sure. This is my excited face. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do since it's such a small group is that we'll work a little bit together on some ideas, if that's all right with you. And then, instead of me just doing a, a boring linear PowerPoint, okay? Does that sound fair? Okay. Is that what you want me to do? <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing is, I want to ask you guys a question. So, you are here for a particular reason, maybe, well, how many of you are mentoring mathematics specifically? Or tutoring mathematics specifically. Okay, so why are you guys here? Um, my degree is in special education, English, and mathematics. So I kind of thought it would be good. Kind of Fantastic. I hope you find it is. Why are you here? Um, I actually need PLTL, but I was interested in doing a different uh, subject material. Very good. So the idea is that um, you will find, I hope, that I'm much different than what you're used to as far as a. Um, a research PhD in mathematics. The idea is that um, I care uh, immensely about the teaching of mathematics and the research mathematics, both. So this is, uh, this is more of the aspect of what it means to teach the uh, content that I um, love so much. So the first thing that you need to think of is this, okay? When, uh, when you think of math, what are the first things that come to mind? So maybe if you've got a piece of paper or something on the back side that you can write down, um, write down some ideas of what comes to mind when you think of the, the discipline of mathematics. Okay, images, metaphors, analogies, anything that comes to mind when you think of what this discipline is. Think of your own student, uh, if you want to call it training, your own learning, when you work with students, or anything in between. What comes to mind? Comes to mind. Like functions, graphs, okay. shapes. Functions, graphs, shapes, concepts. What comes to your mind? Like numbers, logic, theory. Numbers, things. logic, theory. What do you guys? I come up with numbers and applications of life. Okay. Applications of life. Um, graphs. Graphs. What else? Steps to find solutions. Okay. I said equations. Equations. Now, notice what just happened. If you if you can't uh, think about when I said when you think about math, what you came up with are concepts of math, right? What I'm thinking more of is how does it relate to you? Um, how does it make you feel? Okay, because it turns out that when you teach and when you're a student, how you feel about a subject impacts how you well you do in it. Have you ever heard that before? So people that have certain dispositions towards mathematics, uh, ones that are relatively negative, often do worse at the subject matter than if you would have positive. And then the same thing with passion, right? If you're passionate about something, regardless of, uh, of uh, innate natural ability, you tend to do better at it. Does that make sense? So how does math make you feel? Try that. And don't, uh, don't hedge your bets here. Tell the truth. How does it make you feel? You want to start us in? How does it make you feel? It depends on what kind of math you're doing. There's some math that's very comfortable. Okay. And then there's math that scares me a little bit. Interesting. So, just depends. Okay, that's fair. I... Um, depends. Just depends? Okay, can you so give me a couple of words of the depends on one side or the other? Um, it could get me tired. It could get me excited. It could get me... Um, um, Wanting to be involved and to get involved sometimes. Okay. 
I said scared sometimes okay, okay. Scared. Scared's come up a couple of times. How about you? Make you feel smart? Interesting. How about you? I put a mix of creative, sometimes it makes me angry, frustrated, smart. Interesting. How about you? I'd say uh, neutral a lot of the time. Neutral a lot of the time? Okay. Why, did, why can you say neutral? What sort of a balance happens? Um, I mean, sometimes there are problems that are difficult, but a lot of times they're like, not so difficult, so it's kind of like it's an in between usual. Interesting. Okay, so I've been doing this sort of a talk for uh, many years, and I teach some of my coursework this way. I teach future teachers how to teach math. And uh, here's some images I'm going to share with you that come up, okay? This is supposed to be a little bit uh, at least reasonably funny, but since it's only you guys, it takes away a little bit of the charm, right? So here's the first one. Uh, that's scary, right? That's a gigantic spider in your face. Oh yeah, that's terrifying. Oh now that you know what it is, it's even more terrifying. Oh. Yeah, that makes me want to vomit. How about you? Okay, so then we got the uh, terrified snakes thing, frozen in fear, right? Uh, or the dentist. Everybody loves that. That terrifies me. Okay. So I oftentimes, when I give this talk, I give it to different uh, cohorts of students. It comes where I have students that love the discipline and also students that uh, find themselves disengaged from it for some reason. These are the same types of students that you're gonna find yourself tutoring and mentoring, which is why I bring it up. And then also we have the cohorts and the things that you described too, right? So it, maybe it's something like this, right? <laughs> Makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, right? Teddy bears and puppies and kittens and babies. Can you go wrong with any of those? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. And then you got like, it, it's easy, I can, you know, it's a piece of cake, metaphorically speaking. Uh, you have these sorts of metaphors that come out. Or rainbows and butterflies, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unicorns, yeah. And uh, this one for always, for various reasons, always makes people laugh. But the truth is, is that you all feel this, right? Okay. Now you have to keep in mind that how we think about something and how we feel about it comes out in our teaching because you teach who you are. So you will teach mathematics in a particular way based upon who you are. You can't just teach a discipline. That's not true because your interpretation of what math is is different than somebody else's. You will teach your math to other people and that's powerful, meaning that you have a lot of power. Does that make sense? Have you ever thought about it that way? Why not? Wait, yeah, so the, the idea is that you have an immense amount of power because the mathematics that you are representing with the students that you work with, and this is included with myself, um, and I've taught every level of math. So I've taught kindergarten through high school. I taught kindergarten, middle school, high school, and then I've taught graduate level, undergraduate level mathematics. Included. So I've taught all the different levels, and then there's an immense amount of power there, right? When you're chasing third graders and teaching them math, it's the same power as when you're teaching undergraduate math because you're representing a discipline to a group of people and their access to that discipline is through you. You're a channel. It's the same concept when you're tutoring. Okay, does that make sense? So you have a lot of power when you are a teacher. So think about that when you're doing it. Um, so go ahead and read this and see what you think. Something of what we just described. Sense? Sometimes this is lost in the translation when people are talking about teaching. That you don't quite realize how much power you have over a discipline and how it's represented. Because again, there is no true map. There is only the teacher's representation of that for a student and then the student's interpretation of it. Maybe it sounds a little complicated, but it's the truth. Okay? Textbooks are not math. It's somebody's interpretation of math. Somebody just like me, or just like you, wrote a book. And that book we think is math, but it's not. Okay, does that make sense? Are you sure? Anybody disagree with me yet? I would love disagreements. <laughs> okay, all right, so, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, since we have such a small group, you think we'll start at something reasonably easy. I promise you I'm gonna ask you questions about this, this level of topic that is going to make this 
run into the land of incredibly complicated. Okay? So first, I always give you answers to questions that are difficult. So don't worry about that. I don't care about your mathematical ability or whether or not you have some sort of prowess when it comes to this. What I want to know is how would you teach a topic? And then we're going to diagnose whether or not there's a different way of thinking about it. Is that fair? Okay, so if somebody came to you and said, I don't know how to multiply fractions, which actually, in the C1, C2 level, we see that quite a bit, don't we? Okay, C1, C2, is these, these two work for me at the Math Assistance Center. Um, and C1, C2 is the first two levels of calculus. And one of the things that we see most often at that level is that students don't know how to find common denominators and multiply fractions. It's a pervasive problem. But maybe there's something to it. So let's, let's kind of figure that out. So I, if you're OK with it, I'd like you three to work together and figure out a way that you would teach this concept. Is that fair? So introduce yourself to each other and figure out whether or not you can do that. I'd like you three to do the same thing, introduce yourself to each other, and see if you can come up with a way to teach this concept. I'm Bree. I'm Sibron. When you are done, I will distribute writing mechanisms to you. Markers, and you write them on the board. Good catch. So right here, you would just kind of write what it is that you would do to teach this, okay? And then over here, you guys do the same. And then we'll see what, what we come up with. I never, I never understood how to compare them and see how they're similar. Great. I'll try to Remember, there's no wrong answers to these questions. Rarely in a class that I teach is there ever such thing as a wrong answer. Same thing. I'm not again. 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 I'm
so I think we'll have enough time to actually do all of these. So what I'm going to do is show you a second and a third task. And it's not the right or wrong that we're after. Okay? There's no such thing. Um, you may not believe that in math. Some people think that math is so wonderful because there's always a right and wrong answer. That's the height of lunacy. That's not true. Okay? Because 2 plus 3 only equals 5 in our number system. You can do 2 plus 3 equals 1 in a modular arithmetic or something else. There's no such thing as right and wrong answers. There's right, right and wrong perspectives. Okay? Now, if you believe that, that takes away some of the power that math has over people where they're, they say, it makes me feel good because I can always find that one answer that's right. It's just not the way it is, okay? from my perspective. So there are no right and wrong answers when it comes to the teaching of math either. So the second one that I want to show you, and this is a little bit more in depth mathematically, but not much. Uh, how would you teach this topic? Do you remember factoring? Yeah. Okay, so factor completely. This is an addition of perfect cubes. So how do you factor an addition of perfect cubes? If you don't remember, you've got a smartphone, Google it. Right? That's what <laughs> teachers do all the time. So if you don't remember, figure it out. And then tell me how you would teach it. Fair? OK, so I'm going to actually raise this screen for just a second so that we can record these answers as well. That's right. It's just that, no, is it? or doing these uh, slight tests, how did they make you feel? Okay? So go back to ones that you knew were easy compared to ones that you knew were more difficult. And then now maybe one that uh, I have up here, which is solve a system of equations and two variables that involves conic sections and uh, other things. How does that make you feel comparatively? Is that fair? So think about that. If you have something where you're writing these things down, go ahead and write them down and see what you think and how it makes you, how it made you feel going from ones that you potentially know to something that you potentially don't. That's Kevin, the teacher. That's, that's right. <laughs>